The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes, where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of Tiger Town. On a journey that would take them from Sumatra to Borneo, the Beatties crossed the Strait of Malacca for a month of tiger hunting in Malaya. They made their way up the Pasir River to the village of Mira, nestled at the edge of the jungle. In Malaya, the sun always sets about half past six all the year round. The light fades swiftly as though the sun is hurrying to leave this land so filled with dangerous creatures that stir by night. When quick darkness falls, the whole jungle bursts into a tumult of sound. What in the world could be keeping Potek? Uh, Harriet, you know our guide Potek is a good Muslim. He joined the villagers for evening prayers. You call this evening? Look how dark it is. A few minutes ago, it was daylight outside the hut. Right now, it's as black as midnight. Yeah, it sure changes quickly out here. And honey, listen to the noise out there. What a racket those jungle creatures make. Hmm, they don't waste any time getting started, do they? Nope. As soon as that sun goes down, they go to work. Clyde. That long, shuddering wah-wah-wah sound. What animal makes that? <laughs> the wah-wahs, of course. Oh, don't tease me, Clyde. What are they? <laughs> They're gibbons, honey. Those small apes that walk like men. The Malays call them wah-wahs on account of their cry. <sighs> Gives me the creeps. They do sound kind of mournful at that, don't they? Who's striking those silver-toned gongs? Nobody. Nobody? Nobody. You mean they, they, they just sound by themselves? No, those bell-like tones are made by some strange jungle creature. Really? That's a fact. Well, what do they look like? I don't know. Nobody's ever seen one. Well, then how do you know it's an animal? Would you rather think it was ghosts? Oh, is that what the melee think? That it's ghosts? Some of them do. You can take your choice. Mm, I'll stick with your opinion, darling. <laughs> I wish Potek would get back to the hut. I'm anxious to know if he's lined up some helpers for our tiger hunt. Mm, from those barks and snarls and all that racket out there, it sounds like we won't need any help. The tigers will probably hunt us. You're not kidding. The Malayan tiger is one of the most treacherous beasts on Earth. Once we start this hunt, we'll have to be on our toes every second if we're going to stay alive. <laughs> Clyde Beatty will return in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure, Tiger Town. Clyde, it's been hours. What could be keeping Potek? Oh, these people are very ceremonious about everything, dear. They're probably going through all sorts of formalities before they get down to the matter at hand. <laughs> Swan Beatty! Swan Beatty! Ah, that's Potek. Come on up, Potek. Watch your step on that bamboo ladder. It's slippery. No, that's the truth. I'm so high up. Guess it's the only way to keep snakes and things from wandering in, though. Tabe. Sorry, my friends, to have kept you so long waiting. Greetings yourself, friend Potek. Well, what's the verdict? I, uh, I am sorry, friend. The doctor did not grant our request. I, yeah, is right. You mean they won't supply us with helpers for the tiger, huh? Please, friend, do not speak that word for the hairy one. All right, all right. We'll refer to him as Sir Stripes, then. Or hairy face will serve. Hairy one? Hairy face? Sir Stripes? What's all this about? Uh, the Malays think if you mention a tiger, you'll bring a tiger. They fool them by calling a name. Oh. Well, if I were uh, Sir Stripes, I'd resent being called Harry Face. Well, one way or another, this puts us on a spot. Potek, since when are these brave men of Mira afraid to go on a hunt? Since a visit was paid to the settlement by a great pawang of a Sakai tribe of the north. Why? What did the Sakai magician do? 
Well, Tuan, many from Mira fell ill of the disease, Lata. When the Pawang left, many loved ones from the village disappeared. And it is feared they all made their way to the magic river of the north, swam across, thus becoming turnskins, and now are forever citizens of the unspeakable village. Now, look here, Potek. You're no longer like these jungle people. You're a learned Muslim, an educated man. Don't tell me you're reverting to all that jungle superstition. Ay, yeah, yeah, you are right, Tuan. Trinarasi, Trinarasi. Uh, I, I give you thanks for reminding me how easy it is for even an educated man to slip back into primitive beliefs. Well, that's better. Now let's have it straight, huh? Very well, Tuan. To the north, near the border of Siam, there is a river. In the jungle on the other side is a place described as Tiger Town. The entire population is composed of turnskins, men and women, boys and girls who have been changed into beasts. In short, any suffering from Lata, who swim the magic river when they reach the other side, become weird tigers. Oh, Claude! Oh, take it easy, Harriet. Nobody's ever seen it happen. That is not so, Tuan Baby. Many have seen it. You mean many have claimed to uh, yeah, we, we are not in a position to judge. Well, then let's get someplace where we can. Do you know where any of the people who say they've seen this happen can be found? Yes, in a settlement on this side of the Magic River. Well, could you lead us there? Yes. Well, would you lead us there? If, well, if you insist, Juan. We came here to find tigers, and I'm going to find some, even if they prove to be turnskins. <laughs> Here. Can't we go on and take a look at that fabulous river? Potek and I think it'd be better to wait until just before the sun goes down before we make the crossing. Also, Allah has supplied a full moon to light our way tonight. Well, full moon or not, I want to get out of this dense jungle before dark. <laughs> if you're worried about those so-called weird tigers, my darling, we know they're not supposed to come back across the magic river. Yes, we know it, but do the weird tigers. <laughs> You've got a point there, honey. However, according to the legend, when those suffering from Lata cross from this side, they change into tigers. So if they recross the river, I should think they'd turn back into men. I'm not as worried about men changing into tigers and back as I am of tigers being tigers and staying there. With that observation, I heartily agree. I would not take too lightly this matter of Lata, my friends. Throughout the entire East, it is a potent and evil force. We do understand that, Potek, and you're right about taking it seriously. However, we know that this condition is simply a disease of the mind and not something magical or supernatural. True, my friend, but magical or not, Lata is a fact, and it is evil. There it is, my friends, across the river. But, Clyde, it is a town, a tiger town. It's amazing. Yalla, Jahat. Jahat! Well, that's the darndest thing I've oh, ever seen. Jahat! Jahat! Now, take I... it easy, Potek. Oh, push us under. I'll admit I it's incredible, jahat. but why do you keep saying that it's bad? Thurnskins! That kapong is filled with thurnskins. Rot! It's jahat. just a clearing with 10 jahat. or 15 tigers in it. I... I... Now, Potek, get hold of yourself, man. He's huh. hysterical. I... Oh, Clyde, he's not... Jahat. Lata, of course not. Jahat! But his eyes are so wild. I'll snap him out of it. Now, quit it, Potek. Quit it or I'll shake your teeth out. Stop it. Uh, hot. Uh, yeah, that's better. Oh, my friends, I am sorry. It's all right. But you shouldn't let your imagination run wild like that. Oh, it's just that I have heard the legend of Tiger Town since I was but a small boy. and It frightened me. I understand. Uh, and now seeing that kampong crowded with tigers in the place of the Magic River Crossing, well... For a moment, I, I lost what good judgment I possessed. Don't worry about it. Matter of fact, it kind of startled me, too. Clyde, isn't it unusual for that many tigers to gather in one place? Yeah, and that bothers me. And it looks almost as if they were penned in, like the animals at our Fort Lauderdale Zoo. There's no sign of stockades, though. The place looks just like a native village built on the rocks of a clearing. Those hut-like structures are certainly built of stone, and the roofs are definitely bamboo and thatch. The tigers couldn't have made them. I'm going to climb a tree and get a better look. Potek, stay here with Harriet till I get back. Just yes, Tuan. We will wait right here. Don't be long, Clyde. Be back in a few minutes. Potek. Yes? I just can't understand this. 
Perhaps the hairy faces simply took over a deserted village. No, I'm certain tigers wouldn't live in a place where men have been. Yet there across the river stands a man-made village, and pacing around it are, are the hairy ones. You said when the Powang left, many of the villagers disappeared. That is so. Among the men were Daman, Babi, Munyat, Met, and Iskander. The, the women were Amina, Ona, Ise, and Kalan. There were others whom I do not know by name. And none has returned since? None. Strange. Very strange. I, I wish Clyde would come back. Ah, no sooner said than he appears. Everything all right here? All is the same. Were you able to see more from the treetops? Yeah. When you mentioned our Fort Lauderdale Zoo, honey, you weren't far from wrong. What do you mean? That is a village over there. It's composed of dozens of stone huts with thatched roofs. All around the kampong, the clearing, is a series of wide moats filled with water from the river. Then those tigers aren't free. They're prisoners in the village. That's what it looks like. In that case, how do they get their food? They're sleek and fat. Somebody must be feeding them. But who and why? That I don't know. But we're going to find out. We return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now, back to the story of Tiger Town. On the bank of a river in northern Malaya, the Beatties, with their friend and guide Potek, waited for the jungle moon to light their way across to the land of the legendary Weir Tigers. As they crossed the rushing torrent, the raucous snarls of the savage beasts grew louder. You get very wet making that crossing, dear? Just my knees. There was a bit of water where I was kneeling in the dugout. Leaky as it was, it was good we found it or we'd have had to swim. Maybe by now we'd have been turned skin. Please do not speak of it, my friends. And I hope this breeze doesn't shift. We're well downwind of the clearing now. But if we're not careful to circle around and approach it from the north, those tigers are liable to get our scent. Well, what if they do? They can't get out, can they? Probably not. They might start raising a rumpus and alert some people we might not want to see. They seem to be getting more restless. Just tiger talk. They carry on like that normally. But we'd better not make too much noise ourselves. I want to find out a few things before we make our presence known. Come on now. Quietly. Do, uh, do you think there might be unfriendly natives about? That's more than a possibility. We must be close to the place. Let's move carefully now. The trees have thinned out. This must be the rear of the clearing. Yeah. Ah, there's the moat. Let's climb up this rock. From there, we should be able to see the tigers. Uh, oh, there's beauty. Yalla. Yalla. Brother, what a haul. Now, if we can only find who owns them, the Clyde Beatty Circus is going to buy the handsomest batch of striped cats I've ever seen. Perhaps the owners will not wish to sell. Money talks, my friend, even in Malaya. Hey, uh, we shall see. What the... Ay -ye. Oh. Ay -ye. In heaven's name, what's that? Yeah, this is the tiger hunting cry. Was it made by a, a human? Of course it was. Scared me to death. Why not? It's supposed to scare even tigers. I can't believe that. The hunters, the hunters move on. So do we. Let's follow them. It is a dwelling place of Sakai's, wild men of the forest. Their huts are built just like the ones in Tiger Town. That's right. I wonder if these are good Sakai or bad ones. It's hard to tell from here. I would not go down there yet, Tuan. This tribe may be Jahat. And if they're Jahat, we'd be Kaput. Is that it? Ah, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll hide here and watch them for a while. Strange. There doesn't seem to be anyone down there. It can't be much after 8 o'clock. Probably all off on a tiger hunt. The women, too? I don't know. Could be. Look, someone has moved into the moonlight. Well, it's an old man. Aye, it is the old Pawang, the one who visited Mira just before so many of the villagers disappeared. Well, how do you know it's the same man? By that Kinikapala. His head cloth? Yes, Twana. I designed it so that the Dato could give it as a peace offering. Listen. The hunters returned. Oh, 
Look, here they come in the clearing. Why, look, what are they doing? Wait. Hey, those are people the Sakai's are driving. They're hurting them like animals. There must be a dozen or more. They're, they're running on all fours like, like dogs. More friends, more like tigers. What? What do you mean? I recognize them. Yeah, I look. There is Mate. There's Damon and Bobby and, and Munyet. There is Amina, Ona, Isa and Kellen. Oh, Yala, Yala. The Sakai's have driven them into the compound and barred the gates. Oh, horrible, horrible. Well, I don't get it. What's the purpose? Well, for all their lives, my friends will be herded into a kampong at night. And by day, they will be chained around the distant fields of the Sakai. Oh, no marauding native will steal the Sakai grain when it is so guarded by the turnskins. Potek's friends are no more weird tigers than we are. They're sick Ay. with the disease of the mind. Ay, ay, Allah. Ay, Allah. That's a rotten business, and we're going to put an end to it. Clyde, I wish you'd tell me what you're going to do. I will in just a minute. How's the whip coming, Kotek? One more strip from this leather belt, and I think it will serve. Well, hurry, it's getting late. Now I can weave the leather so. There. Here is your grip, Juan. Try it. I... That'll do. Okay, now listen closely. Harriet, you and Potek are to go back to the village where we were hiding when the Sakai's returned with those poor people. Yes? If things go as I plan, you'll hear a big commotion here in Tiger Town. What are you going to do? I haven't got time to explain. Now, if I'm right, the Sakai's will come tearing over to see what's up. Then you're to release the captives. Clyde, and... you're not going in there with all those tigers. There are only a dozen big ones. I've handled plenty more than that. But these are wild. The ones I work in the circus aren't exactly house for Anyhow, they're fat and lazy. They'll probably be more afraid of me than I will of them. I hope. I won't let you do it. I hate to give orders, honey, but I'm bossing this safari and you'll do as I say. Then let me stay with you. Kotek can release the others. No. Just seeing a woman there will help snap them out of the Lata State. When you turn them loose, get across the river and keep going fast. I'll catch up with you later. All right, Clyde. Good luck, Tom. Thanks. I may need it. Now get going. Well, you striped kitties are kind of surprised to see me on your side of the moat, aren't you? Shut up, hairy face. You can't scare me with your big noise. Boy, you don't like that, huh? Well, have some more. I think it. That's it, boys. Stand over there and talk this thing over. You better make a lot more noise, though. I want the Sakai's to come running. That's good. Those roars should fetch them. Yes, sir. Here they come, just like we planned. No, you don't, sir, Stripes. Get back! Back! Okay, hairy ones. Here's where the performance starts. Those jokers won't know what I'm saying, but they'll see me here with you cats and think I'm a real for true weir tiger. If I know my natives, they should run for the hills. Hey! You Sakai! Look at me! I'm a tiger! A man tiger! A king over tigers! Get back! Listen, you! Oh! Oh! Hear my hunger cry, my tiger hunger cry. Well, feed it before I decide to gobble up a couple or three of you. Come on, feed it. Get out of here. <laughs> Look at him run. Look at him run. Oh, Clyde. I was never so glad to see anyone in my life. I thought at first it was the Sakai chasing us. <laughs> no, honey. The way they ran for the hills when they saw me in there with those tigers, they should be all the way to Siam by now. <laughs> oh, well, thank goodness you're safe. And those poor captors are free. Did they give you any trouble? No, they followed Mika's land. Clyde, will they be all right now? Will they recover from the effects of Lata? They should, with proper care and treatment, they should. Good. Can we get out of Malaya now? Sure, but not till we get us a few tigers. You mean we're going to start this all over again? 
Oh, Clyde, there are times I wish you did a trained dog act. <laughs> Here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. We did bring back some tigers from Malaya. They were beauties, and some of them are still with my circus. Oh, don't worry. They were really, truly tigers and not turnskins. I'll have an exciting story for you next time. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced and transcribed by Shirley Thomas, written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tausig. Music composed and conducted by Albert Glasser. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>